What's going on, everyone? Welcome to the Friday, July 28th edition of the MLB Sims video. I'm your host, Adam Scherer. You can follow me on Twitter at ShipMyMoneyDFS. We have a massive 14-game MLB slate tonight, making up for last night's short three-gamer. And as always, we're going to walk through the MLB Sims tool and look at what the DraftKings lineups look like uh, for tonight's contest early on in the day. As a reminder, things will change between now and lock as we get ownership updates, official lineups, all of that stuff. But this still will give you a good idea of how to attack the slate. And you can see ways to use this tool uh, if you were to decide to use it for your own lineups. If you want to do that, there is a link below this video, whether you're watching on YouTube or Twitter, you can use the link and sign up there. Also, if you're watching on YouTube, give it a thumbs up. If you're watching on Twitter, give it a like. That helps us out quite a bit. Now, starting with the top individual lineups, uh, I made 2,000 lineups. They're all five-man stacks. Some have a three-man secondary. Some have a two-man secondary. And at the top here, we have a couple of Milwaukee stacks, Scherzer and Grayson Rodriguez in the first one, Contreras, Adamas, Yelich, Weimer, and Blake Perkins from the Brewers, and then a three-man Cleveland stack with Jose Ramirez, Andre Jimenez, and Josh Naylor. Um, one thing that stands out about this slate from an overall standpoint is that there's not any clear-cut dominant stacks. The Minnesota Twins have the highest top stack percentage in our top stack tool at 9%. So it's pretty flat across the board. Milwaukee is right in the middle, 3.5% chance of being the top stack, 3.5% projected ownership. They look fine. They're taking on Yanni Torinos tonight in Atlanta. Uh, Torinos has had power issues to both sides, both sides of the plate. They're relatively inexpensive. So you can get a pretty high upside stack there. Scherzer has about a 27% strikeout percentage this year. He looks like one of the more popular pitchers on the slate, pulling um, about 23% ownership. And then Grayson Rodriguez is a good value option who actually isn't getting that much ownership, but he's only $6,300 facing the Yankees in Baltimore. It is very hot in Baltimore. Aaron Judge is back for the Yankees, so it's a scarier spot than it would have been, say, a week ago for Rodriguez. But at 6,300 and low ownership, with about a 26% strikeout percentage overall this year and looking much better since returning from the minor leagues, uh, it's a very cheap price tag and very interesting play. We had another Milwaukee-Cleveland stack in second. Then we get to the Rockies and the Cubs, five-man Rockies, two-man Cubs. The Rockies are facing J.P. Sears tonight in Coors Field. Obviously, they're not the best offense, but Coors Field is Coors Field. Uh, so you're getting Mackenzie Gore and Tommy Henry here. Pretty ugly pitching, uh, particularly with regard to Henry. Gore is a solid value option. He's only $7,300. Like Grayson Rodriguez, he's not getting that much ownership, but he has the second-highest strikeout percentage on the slate. He has a sub-4 XFIP. It's not an easy matchup for him tonight against uh, against the Mets, but he's a good strikeout pitcher at a cheap price tag without much ownership. So I do like using him. And then we get to the Rockies with Diaz, Crone, Tovar, Grichik, and Profar, Suzuki, and Morel coming back from the Cubs with a Jose Ramirez one-off. Obviously, Jose Ramirez is, uh, is always a very high upside play. Uh, then we're getting to the Royals, the White Sox, the Cardinals, uh, the Dodgers, Padres, five-man stacks. So as you can see in the stacks column here, you're getting pretty spread out stacks at the top. And that's not surprising given how flat top stack percentages for these teams are. Now we're going to select the top 150 lineups and take a look at the individual exposures and stack exposures. As far as stacks go, Colorado leading the way at 14%, Oakland coming in second at 11. Neither of those should be too surprising since the game's in Coors Field, but both of those numbers are higher than the field. Colorado right now only projected for about 6% aggregate ownership with about an 8% chance of being the top scoring stack. Oakland, about a 7.5% chance of being the top scoring stack at 9% ownership. So over the field on both of those teams, more so on Colorado. We're getting around the field on Minnesota. They're projected for 12% aggregate ownership. We're getting about 10. As I mentioned before, they are the uh, highest team in top stack percentage, um, getting to some Philly, some Milwaukee. The Dodgers are a really interesting stack because they're not getting much ownership, 6% aggregate ownership, but they have a really good spot against Brandon Williamson. They're in LA, which is a good home run park, and you can get to them without sacrificing too much pitcher upside because you do have Mackenzie Gore and Grayson Rodriguez. Uh, Cutter Crawford, also a reasonable value option. So I, I like the idea of getting to the Dodgers. We are getting a little bit over the field there, which is nice to see. Uh, as far as individual exposures go, Grayson Rodriguez and Mackenzie Gore both here at the top. Now, this is the kind of thing that if this ownership projection comes up, their our exposure to them probably goes down. But either way, they're very interesting ways to get good hitters into your lineups without really sacrificing upside. Sure, they don't project as well as the top end pitchers on the slate, but you have very good strikeout stuff from both of them. And you're able to mix really good hitters in with them. Kevin Gossman coming in third. We're right around the field there. 28% exposure, 33% projected ownership. 
He looks very good, as he always does. 33% strikeout percentage is the highest on the slate. Sub 3 x XFIP. Then we start getting into the bats here at uh, 22%. Tovar, Ramirez, Loriano, Rooker, Crone. So a lot of Coors Field. And then we have Cleveland showing up as well. Looking at the pitchers specifically, uh, just to see what's standing out as far as being over or underweight on them. Gore and Rodriguez, obviously, were getting over the field. Um, nothing else really stands out in that regard. Right around the field on Henry, getting to a little bit of Singer, but you know, only 5%. As far as being under the field, Logan Webb projected for 17% ownership. We're only getting about 5%. That's fine. Um, he's pitching in San Francisco, which is nice, but he does have a tough matchup with the Red Sox. He is $10,200. How often you get to Webb probably is going to depend on how often you're getting to cheap sacks as opposed to the more expensive ones. We're getting under the field on Cole. He's very tough to get to today as the most expensive pitcher on the slate. Um, other than that, nothing really stands out as far as pitchers that we are drastically different from the field on um, overall players. We can take a look at that. Most over the field, again, on Rodriguez and uh, Gore. Then we're over the field on Tovar. But again, nothing too crazy here in terms of how how far over the field we are. As far as being under the field, it's Webb, Cole, Wheeler at the top. Again, nothing, not not much more than you know 10% above or below the field. Not many guys that were more than 10% above or below on. So um, pretty interesting, I think that, and it again goes back to the fact that this slate is very spread out. Um, team Top stack percentages are very flat. So it's not really surprising to see that we're not taking any or too many huge individual stands because it's just a big enough slate where you can kind of just play the lineups that you want. You don't have to worry about ownership too much. So uh, that does make sense. And that's all I have for you in this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for checking it out. Again, if you want to use this tool to improve your own DFS performance, check the link below. Other than that, good luck on your lineups tonight and enjoy your weekend.